Hey, Steve Mignogna here at High Octane Classics in Auburn, Massachusetts. Now, if you know about the Ford Mustang, you certainly know about the Chevy Camaro. Now, we all know that in the 1964 model year, Mustang came first as a 65. But with that said, uh, Chevrolet did not stand still for very long at all. Debuting in 1967, their Mustang fighter, the Camaro. Seen right here for the very first time. Time, 1967. And here's the thing, in 1967, a total of 230,920 Camaros were built, of which only 19,856 were drop tops, like this right here. So with that said, the model year drop from 66 to 67 in Mustang land fell just about 231,000 units as a whole bunch of Ford would-be shopper says, you know what, I'd really rather have a Camaro. And so they did. They bought Camaros instead of Mustangs. And of course, those numbers would shift places here and there. But again, the first year Camaro seen right here in 1967. Now, something about 1967 that was a one-year thing was this. These are the Astro ventilations, or actually, I should say, these are vents here in the A pillar that absolutely do a nice job of venting uh, air from the outside and the inside of the car. But these went away in 1968 in favor of the Astro ventilation. So 67 only right here for these little vent windows right here. I prefer them personally. But keep in mind, the convertible body style was in the minority for sure. Only 19,856 of these were built with the drop top. And a lot of other things happened in 1967 in Camaro Land. First year, first disc brakes up front. Here we have them here. The first rally style wheel. And of course, the one and first year for the 350, which was standard fare in the Camaro SS. You could not get a 350 in any other Chevrolet except for pickup trucks in 1967. Even the Corvette in 1967 had a 327. Of course, 1967, the floodgates opened up. The 350 became very much available in most any Chevrolet vehicle. But for 67, Chevy wisely kept the 350 exclusive to the Camaro. Now, one thing that's cool about this too is this one here is a 350 four barrel with 295 horsepower, the L48, I believe. And if you look at the leaf springs on this, you'll see they're quite a bit thicker. There's about five leaves on each side, whereas lesser cars with two barrel carburetors had one, maybe two leaves. So these were meant to accelerate and not axle hop. And again, very much like the Mustang, which was this car's chief competitor, uh, Camaro did something kind of unusual. Whereas Mustang convertibles had very narrow rear seats, which couldn't really seat three across, Camaro had room for three all the way across. One, two, three. Kind of a little hedge against the, uh, the compact car, pony car phase, which allowed these things to seat five people, whereas a Mustang convertible only sat four. Plenty of room in the trunk. You've got to love the D80 trunk spoiler right here. Just gave these cars a sassy vibration. And keep in mind, as a 354 barrel, this one has the 12 volt rear axle with the 8.8 inch ring gear seen prominently right there. This one does have a uh, aluminum cover with fins on it, which helps to keep it cooler uh, on longer rides. But you just got to love the Camaro's dual exhaust system with these sort of saucy little uh, downturn dual exhausts. But most importantly, we've got to talk about that 350 engine under the hood. One detail that Chevrolet exclusively used on the SS350 was this very special hood. Now, this hump in the middle doesn't do a darn thing except help to exclusivize the SS. Now, these two grates in the middle here don't allow air in or air out, but they sure sold the heck out of a lot of Camaros. Now, getting underneath that hood, let's have a peek and see what we can find. Underneath that slick, super sport specific hood is the mighty 350 small block. Now, you got to remember, the small block Chevy debuted in 1955 as 265 cubic inches, two barrel or four barrel. And of course, the 350 arrived in 1967. Now, this one here does have the four barrel carburetor and plenty of power here. This one's rated at 300. One aftermarket add-on are the steel tube headers that we see right here, which probably add about 20 horsepower. No harm done there. This one does have power disc brakes up front, drums in the back, and again, plenty of stopping power to slow this 3,200-pound ragtop from almost any power or any speed you might want to take it to. Now, let's look inside. Like the Camaro's arch nemesis, the Mustang, a very sporty interior, was certainly available with 
bucket seats, center console, and a spiffy aluminum centered steering wheel. Now, again, remember, you paid a little extra for the Strato bucket seats in the Camaro, and the vast majority of things were sold with the bucket seats in the center console. Now, keep in mind, you want to stick around to the end of this video because you want to hear the 350 under the hood fire up and run. It's a beautiful sound. If you like the Ford Mustang, you probably love the Chevy Camaro. To learn more about this car, check it out on the High Octane Classics website.